I asked a USC associated molecular biologist, virologist, if I could spend a summer in his lab. And so I went into his lab and, uh, and biology was not what I expected it to be. I expected it to be things that smelled bad in refrigerators, right? And what happened was it was all about A, T, C, and G. Mm -hmm. I'm in this laboratory and everybody's viewing what's going on from a biological standpoint, the way they had learned to view it, you know, and successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see it that way at all. I saw the cell as doing computations, you know, based on these words over a four-letter alphabet, right? I'm reading a book one day, and there's this wondrous little molecule. It's a protein. It's called polymerase, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I'm reading about it, and what polymerase does is it jumps onto a strand of DNA, and it's like a juggler on a tightrope. And it walks down the strand, and it reads the A, T, Cs, and Gs. And if it's walked forward onto the next letter, it reads it and it reaches out into the solution around itself and grabs a corresponding letter and then attaches that to a growing strand of DNA that it's building. Mm -hmm. And then it takes another step forward, grabs another molecule based on what it's standing on, adds it. And by this, this mechanism, this little protein, uh, that's how DNA reproduces. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of the, the centerpiece of life. Because if DNA, if polymerase didn't reproduce DNA, then cells wouldn't reproduce. And we wouldn't reproduce, right? It's where life happens. And it's, it's about two nanometers in every direction. And it does this incredible stuff. But from my point of view, here was this string of letters, the DNA, and this little machine that was walking along it, making new strings of letters. Well, you know, to anybody who grew up with my intellectual background, it was a Turing machine. That's what Turing machines were. That's what Turing, that's what the first conceptual real computers were. And, uh, and so I remember I sat up in bed, because I was reading it in bed, and I said to my wife, I said, these things can compute. And so at that moment, I knew that they could compute. And so I said, well, you know, why don't I run an experiment during the summer where I'll get them to compute something? And so I designed an experiment. Uh, it didn't work just like a Turing machine, but I knew that the tools of molecular biology would make, th these tools would give me universality in the sense of Turing. I could compute whatever I wanted with DNA and these proteins. You know, I could balance a checkbook or fly to Mars, but I chose to, um, to do something called the, uh, uh, Hamiltonian path problem. Mm -hmm. And so I sat in the lab and I did this experiment with the tools of molecular biology. And, you know, basically in a drop of water, a computation took place. And it took place by interacting molecules. Those were the operations. And, it, uh, and I did the experiment and I did all the work and I got the answer. I mean, that is, it worked. Mm -hmm. I did find the Hamiltonian path. And uh, it was a small example. But I, uh, I said, well, uh, what am I going to, you know, I'll write it up as a paper. Where should I submit it? Well, I didn't know anything about the biological world, right? You know, of where you submit these things. So the only thing I knew that would accept papers like this was science, right? So I sent it off to science and, you know, I didn't know. I, th I reject it, whatever. And, uh, and it turned out that the reviews came back, you know, with words like, you know, you know, 
just just superlatives, right? And I said, "Wow, that's surprising." And so, uh, and it became a paper, and uh, people liked it, and uh, it launched a field called DNA computing.